the end of every year, Billboard magazine publishes their annual list of that year's top 100 songs. Uh, they've been doing this since 1959, and I went ahead and went through them all. Uh, I, I love these lists. I love going through every year and getting a real accurate snapshot of the popular music of yesteryear and what it was really like and checking out the true classics and the, the well-remembered period markers and the, the forgotten gems and, of course, the outright crap. And since I know what pays the bills, you can guess which of those we'll be talking about today. So let's take a nice close look at the top 100 songs of... 1987. 1987. What the f*** is going on? Well, I'll tell you, not a whole lot. This was not a good year for the pop charts, if this list is any indication. Sure, there were a few classic 80s hits in there, but for the most part, this list is just crap. Anyone who thinks the 80s was nothing but dayglow fashions and new wave hairdos, all I can tell you is expect a lot less Flock of Seagulls and a lot more Richard Marks. It was hard for me to find 10 songs distinct enough to be even worth hating. Whatever shock of energy had been provided by MTV and New Wave at the beginning of the decade is at this point starting to devolve into a big, gloopy mess of synth cheese. And that's a trend that's going to continue as we move into the utter horror that is the early 90s. How bad is this list? Here's all you need to know. The Cutting Crew have two songs in the top 100. And meanwhile, I wasn't expecting to see any like Sonic Youth or anything, but I don't think it's that far out of line for me to ask to see a little something from contemporaneous bands like R.E.M., The Cure, New Order, or freaking Aerosmith. Seriously, Sting is too left of the dial for 1987. That's how bad it was. But you know what? This is the year I picked, and we're gonna power through it. So don't disturb this groove. Don't dream it's over. We're counting down. The top 10 Worst hit songs of 1987. Number 10. Now here's a justly forgotten piece of pop culture ephemera. No, not this. You know what this is. This is Funky Town, 1980 disco classic by one hit wonder Lips Inc. Not one of my favorite songs, admittedly, but one that certainly earned its place in pop culture history because it's one of the most maddeningly catchy songs ever written. All you have to do is hear a couple seconds of it, and you know you'll be hearing it over and over again in your head for the rest of the week. Oh, and by the way, you're welcome. And part of the reason why it's so catchy is its sense of restraint. It has an impossibly tight, controlled groove accented by the track's incessantly memorable beeping keyboard hook. Deep, 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 deep. So yeah, I can't think of a quicker way to ruin the song than to pump it all up like it's on steroids. This fine band with the over-enthusiastic guitar player is the Australian group Pseudo Echo, and they are basically a poor, poor, poor man's in excess. Like I said, I wasn't a huge fan of the original, but it certainly worked better as a disco track than a jamming 80s rock tune, specifically by a band who let their guitars pick the single most awful, blaring preset on their Casio. You know, I've always felt bad for bands whose only hit was a cover. Yeah, looking at you on the Indian farm. But when your one hit was covering someone else's one hit, you've taken the lameness of being a one hit wonder and multiplied it exponentially. At least some one-hitters can say, yeah, we covered Michael Jackson, or Simon and Garfunkel, or N.W.A., or someone cool. But Pseudo Echo's only claim to fame is covering Funky Town. Badly. Pseudo Echo. A one-hit wonder without the wonder. Good riddance. Won't you take me down? Number 9. The year was 1987, and the world belonged to Gregory Abbott. Yeah. Gregory Abbott mania was in full effect. You couldn't walk down the street without seeing dozens of Gregory Abbott t-shirts and backpacks. Little girls ran screaming at Gregory Abbott every time he stepped out in public. I assume, at least. I mean, I wasn't really paying attention at the time. Most of the songs I knew came from Sesame Street. It's, you know, I just kind of figured that's how it was because 
Gregory Abbott is right at number three on the list. Number three, higher than Michael, higher than Madonna, higher than Prince and Bon Jovi, U2, Whitney, Janet, George Michael, higher than all of them. And that's astonishing to me because I've never heard of this song. Have you? And you know. I mean, I guess you might have if you were there, but I've sat through quite a few VH180s marathons and this song apparently has had virtually no staying power. But still, it's not hard to see how this got so popular. Abbott had the smoldering good looks of C. Thomas Howell as Soul Man, and he had a singing voice so good, he might be able to place ninth on a bad season of American Idol. I've been missing you And the way you make me feel inside It ain't any mighty more Come on Oh no, Bieber flashbacks! Ah! Ah! This is what happens when you let quiet storm ballads be written by people who probably spent the entire 80s wearing Cosby sweaters. And seriously, shake you down? I mean, I, I get love you down, lay you down, rub you down maybe, but shake you down? I might not have known what Usher meant when he said he'd break you down, but I do know what shaking someone down means. A shakedown is extortion. Gregory Abbott is threatening to mug you. Isn't that right, Bob Seger? Yeah, Seger knows what he's talking about. Oh, and by the way, Shakedown by Bob Seger? Another hit from 1987 this was bigger than. Number eight. Now here's a question. How do you take a band like this and then get them to spend more than a decade making this? I don't know how that happens. All I know is that even though I think I have a pretty good tolerance for 80s soft rock, I can, I cannot deal with Chicago. If Chicago had had 10 hits this year, I'd have put them all on the list. They only had one, so that's what's making it on here. Chicago are the nickelback of the 80s. It wasn't just that they were bad, it was also that they maintained such an unblemished and consistent track record of being completely awful, yet inexplicably successful from the very beginning of the decade to the very end. This was off their 18th album. Other bands might have had smellier shit, but no one had more of it. 1987 finds shit Chicago very, very deep in their suck period, but it also finds them at a deeply uncertain place in their history. They were still reeling off the loss of longtime frontman Peter Cetera, and they were struggling to answer a very, very serious question. Could they still suck without him? Well, through hard work and perseverance, they proved that they could suck harder than ever. They had not yet begun to suck. They were gonna suck all night and suck every day. But go on, they did. And they continued to stink up the joint right through the 80s and even into the 90s, forever staining the good name of their namesake city. Seriously, the Windy City has suffered through the Chicago Fire, Al Capone, and the horrible, still lingering infestation of Cubs fans. Hasn't that city suffered enough? Number 7. One thing that I promised myself when I put this list together is that it was going to have all the songs that I legitimately hated the most, not the easiest targets or the ones that gave me the most material. I mean, I mean, look at this. It's Bruce Willis. Bruce freaking Willis singing and dancing and people are actually listening to this. I guess he was moonlighting as a singer. Too bad his music career died hard. <laughs> ah, oh, good times. Well, anyway, here's Lionel Richie with Ballerina Girl. Ballerina Girl, you are... See, that's the problem with this list. Most of the worst songs of this year aren't hilarious or wacky, they're just dull as shit. Lionel Richie's Ballerina Girl is a father-daughter song so saccharine and sentimental and boring it makes butterfly kisses sound like Enter Sandman. I realize there's a place in this world for quieter songs, but this song is so slow I think the tempo is written in negative numbers. 
And it's not like Lionel Richie was ever the most exciting performer to begin with. I mean, his big hit from that album was Dancing on the Ceiling, and that was his party song, you know? Like, ooh, party, party time, ooh, -hoo, get crunk up in here. Yeah, ain't no party like a Lionel Richie party, yeah. Yeah, so when Lionel wants to take things down a notch, that's when you know you start to get worried. I'm never gonna break your heart. But wait a minute. And this literally occurred to me right before I sat down. If this is a father-daughter song, that means that Lionel wrote this for Paris Hilton BFF slash tabloid magnet slash useless human being Nicole Richie. Does that make this song utterly hilarious in hindsight? Oh, you better believe it! Ballerina girl You are so lovely With you standing there I'm so so fast. Alright, let's move on before I fall asleep. Number 6. Oh god, I hate it! Yeah, I'll be honest. This song is on the list entirely for those first few seconds. Not that the rest of the song is any good. I have no idea what made Lisa Lisa any kind of acceptable pop star to anyone. Lisa Lisa and the Cult Jam had several minor hit songs through the latter half of the 80s, most of which were completely unlistenable. That her production team called themselves Full Force is a ridiculous joke to me considering the fact that everything I've ever heard from them is painfully weak and completely lacking in force. Oh, except for this. Yeah, that one off-key blast of bad synth and bad singing unfortunately does hit you at full force. Lisa Lisa allegedly comes from a Latin hip-hop background, but I don't hear it. I just hear an overly chipper fame reject doing a bad Paul Abdul impression. And what bothers me the most about this is all the reviews I've read comparing this to Motown. Motown? Seriously? How? What about this sounds anything like Motown? I guess I do hear it. So yeah, this sounds exactly like Motown, except without the tight musicianship, the soulful singing, or the longevity. Seriously, why would I want to listen to Lisa Lisa and the Cult Jam when I can just listen to the Cult or the Jam? Oh dear lord, make it stop! Number five. It really pains me to have to put a band that I actually really like on this list. Like, I've actually seen them in concert and they're great. Uh, but this is an honest list, so it's gotta be what's gotta be. All right, 1986, 1987, big years for the band Genesis. Probably the height of their fame, five hit singles off their Invisible Touch album, four of which I really like, including, of course, the world-conquering classic, Land of Confusion. Now, if you were going to guess which of the songs I don't like, judging by the rest of this list, you'd probably pick the slow adult contemporary ballad In Too Deep. But you know what? I think I actually kind of like In Too Deep. In fact, I think it's the most moving pop song of the 1980s. It's about monogamy and commitment. The song is extremely uplifting. Their lyrics are as positive and affirmative as anything I've heard in rock. Christy. Get down on your knees so Sabrina can see your asshole. No, instead of the dull, easy listening piece, I went with the edgy, angry single. Pfft, what kind of critic am I? Tonight, tonight, tonight. I'll tell you what kind of critic. The kind that hates Tonight, Tonight, Tonight by Genesis. This song is apparently about drug addiction, and if they intended to make a song that sounded as appealing as heroin withdrawal, they succeeded. Most of the songs on this list are too bland, but this is the complete opposite. I cannot believe the same public that put Brian Adams and Whitney Houston on the pop charts also wanted to hear this crushingly unpleasant song and its highly questionable lyrics. What? Going down like a monkey? Do monkeys go down? 
How do you know that? Yeah, like a lot of Phil Collins' angry music, Tonight 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 is just a dull discordant slog of the song, and unfortunately there's no dun 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 to kick things into gear. And don't try to tell me that the ugliness of this song is somehow Genesis going back to their prog roots. This isn't progressive, it's just a mess. I like Tonight, I like Tonight Tonight, but Tonight 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 is one tonight too many. Get off the stage, Phil Collins! Number four. All right, 80s music. When you think of 80s music, what are you thinking of? You're thinking of hair metal. Oh, there. We are halfway there, John Bon. Specifically, 87 is about the halfway point between hair metal's dynamic birth and its sad, well-deserved death. So we've got both sides of it right here. On one hand, you got the stuff that's aged pretty well, like Bon Jovi and White Snake, and on the other end of it, you've got Europe. Europe was one of the cheesiest bands in history. Their lead singer was named Joey Tempest, for God's sakes. I think even Journey was laughing at them. Now, Europe, of course, is best known for the cheese classic, The Final Countdown. And a lot of people will tell you that's one of the worst songs of all time, but I think it's kind of charming in its ridiculousness. Carrie, however, is as bad a hair ballad as you're going to find. This is humiliating to listen to. This song is completely and utterly useless. Even if you have a girlfriend named Carrie, you can't sing it to her. It's a breakup song. Well, I mean, you can try it, but I don't think it'll go over very well. They're all gonna laugh at you, Europe. And they should. Number three. So, how do you take a band like this? Don't you want somebody to love? Don't you need somebody to love? And then eventually get them to make this. I don't have any answers for this one either. We Built This City is the song everyone thinks of when they pick on Starship, but their big hit in 87 was Nothing's Gonna Stop Us Now, off the Mannequin soundtrack, you believe that? And that song is really, honestly, and truly one of my favorite songs of the decade. No, I'm not kidding. Let's see what else we got on this list. We got a Mandolin Rain, that's a good song. Uh, Always by Atlantic Star, also good. Didn't We Almost Have It All by Whitney Houston? All good songs! So, like, I, I made my point, right? It's not like I hate everything out of the soft rock genre. You know, I do like some of it, it's just, I have a line. So, going back to the original question, who turned this into this? This guy. It's time I fall in love. I love Peter Cetera is one of the true real life villains of the 80s. Right up there with Ayatollah Khomeini, Pablo Escobar, the guy who shot the Pope. Peter Cetera is a war criminal. Peter Cetera made the stock market crash. Peter Cetera killed my dog. Like I've wanted to before. And apparently Peter Cetera was also worried that he might not be able to suck as hard without Chicago, so he actually recruited a contemporary Christian singer to duet with him. A move so evil, I cannot believe James Bond never showed up to assassinate him. What else is there to say about this song? It's bland, it's boring, here's a list of synonyms for bland. And that's it, that's all I have. This song is just a giant beige avalanche burying you in suck. And with that, I think we finally exhausted our supply of bad cheesy soft rock from the 80s. Now, I'm not promising the rest of the list is gonna be good obviously, but at the very least it'll be a more animated level of bad. Thank God, let's get to it. Number two. Nothing's gonna change my love for you. You wanna know my now how much I love you. One thing you can be sure of. I'll never rest more than you. I 
hate this list. I hate this list. I hate this list so goddamn much. It's such a stupid, stupid idea. I hate this list. If I had to live my life without you near me. This song makes my skin crawl. My mother loves it. Glenn Medeiros was a Portuguese Hawaiian kid who was 17 when he won a local radio contest. He cut a record and, out of nowhere, it got big. And you can tell that this was a record never intended for mass consumption because everything about this record screams, I was meant to be seen by a few friends and family, and that's it. You don't have to change a thing. I love you just the way you are. Uh, Mr. Medeiros, call for you from Billy Joel's lawyers online too. And of course, the lameness of this song is augmented by what has to be the saddest, sorriest excuse for a music video ever witnessed by man. I'm not sure that I didn't accidentally find the karaoke video for this instead. You gotta give credit for them for making a video that looks exactly like the ad for the compilation CD this inevitably ended up on. Order now and get all these classic hits! Medeiros had one more hit, a duet with Bobby freaking Brown of all people, and then he mercifully disappeared and the world did its best to forget he ever existed. But now we've cleared out all the boring ones, right? I mean, that's gotta be it. There's no way that I can top that for bad easy listening schlock. There's no more. We're done, right? Prepare yourselves. Number one. Okay, some acts, no matter how big they get, you don't see them on the pop charts. Yo-Yo Ma does not have any pop hits. The Wiggles do not have any pop hits. And it's not like those acts are unpopular, it's just you don't see them on the pop charts because they don't go on the pop charts, they don't belong on the pop charts. And if, if you saw them on the pop charts, you'd be like, what? What? It'd be hilarious. But it wouldn't happen. It couldn't happen. It just couldn't happen. Oh no. No way. No. Way. I refuse to believe that the general public of 1987 put actual, literal elevator music on the hit parade. No, 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 no. 1987, you have gone too far! I legitimately did not believe that Kenny G had any hit songs. I mean, I know my parents have the Kenny G Christmas album, possibly in an attempt to keep us from getting too excited about Christmas, but, like, on, on the radio? On, on television with an actual music video? Why? It's bad enough to listen to, who would want to look at it? He's just standing there. He's not doing anything. He's just playing his stupid saxophone. There's not even any lyrics. It's, screw this, I'm gonna come up with my own lyrics. Kenny G. He's a stupid looking guy And he plays his goddamn saxophone It makes me want to die He's playing it's like, oh, what, I, I'm sitting here listening to Kenny freaking Jake! Why am I doing this? Why? God, make it There you have it. 1987, the year that brought you Kenny G. Screw this year, screw this entire overrated decade. I'm out.